Hi, in this video, we'll be discussing a question on quadratic equation and the nature of roots. We will also be talking about quadratic inequalities. Let us begin with part A of this question. Given the solution set of 3x squared less than hx plus k is given to be x in the range of negative 2 and 1 third to 2 and a half, where h and k are constants, you are to find the value of h and of k. And that's a 3 marks question. In part B of this question, find the range of values of m for which the curve of y equals to x squared plus bracket m plus 2 close bracket x plus 1 minus m does not intersect the straight line of y plus x equals to 1. And that's a 3 marks question. You might want to pause this video to give this question a try. And when you're ready, keep watching. For part A of this question, we are given a solution set of x in the range of this. And this range will actually answer to this quadratic inequality. And we are to find the value of h and of k. The way I look at this question is that we need to form a separate quadratic inequality using this range of answers and we will do a direct comparison against the given quadratic inequality in order for us to form a h and a k. So what this means is that we need to work backwards. So usually we are given a quadratic inequality, we need to find the range, the solution set. Now we are given a solution set, we are supposed to work backwards, find the quadratic inequality and do a direct comparison. So before we start our first step to our part A, let us first recap on our quadratic curve sketching like this. So as we can see here, this is a 3x squared. The coefficient x squared is greater than 0. It implies a happy face curve or a minimum curve like this. So the part of the curve that is a positive refers to the part that is above the x-axis and it consists of two range, lesser than lesser, greater than greater. What happens if the solution set is a one range? Uh, what happens if the solution set is a one range like this question here? The solution set is a one range. It refers to the part of the curve that is below the x-axis and the inequality must be set as a lesser than zero. So with this in mind, we can start our step one of our part A questions. So in step one, we will have this. Over here, we, have, we will rewrite the proper fractions of negative two and one thirds into a negative seven over three and the two and a half into a five over two. This to facilitate um, the working backwards process of writing it into a brackets later on. So transferring this information of negative 7 over 3 to 5 over 2 and this is the solution set. Obviously, it refers to one range. You will have this answer like this. So negative 7 over 3 is on the left, the intercept with the x-axis. And the 5 over 2 is on the right, the intercept with the x-axis. And obviously, this is obviously referring to one range. One range refers to the part that is below the x-axis. And this implies that the quadratic inequality we're going to set is actually lesser than 0. So we will begin the working backwards process. And by working backwards, it means we have this step. So over here, negative 7 over 3 on the left can be rewritten backwards as a 3x plus 7. Because if you set a 3x plus 7 to be equal to 0, x will actually be equal to negative 7 over 3. Now the, now the technique is pretty simple, is that the denominator now is your 3x. If it's a minus, to write backwards, it becomes a plus. The numerator is just simply the constants. Likewise, we can do the same thing for the other brackets, whereby we have 2x minus 5. So over here, if you set 2x minus 5 to be equal to 0, x will actually be a 2.5. Now, if you have to write it backwards, the denominator now is a 2x. Because it's a positive, we write it as a negative. And the numerator now is just simply a constant at the back. So what we do now is we set it to be less than 0 because of what we conclude earlier. It is a one range of answer. It must be set to be less than 0. Now, expanding this part out and simplifying, we should have a 6x squared minus x minus 35 to be less than 0. Now, as you can see here, we are not done yet. We cannot do a comparison because the x square is very different. Our x square is a 6x square and the coefficient x square is a 3. So what we do next is to divide by 2 and write it in this form. So divide by 2 throughout this quadratic inequality and writing in the same form, 
6x squared divided by 2 shall give us a 3x squared. Negative x minus away 35. If you shift to the right and divide by 2, we should get a 0.5x and a 17.5. Now, I highlighted in yellow and green so they can see it uh, clearer in this case. So what we can do is we can do a comparison between the two yellows. So by comparison, I'm comparing against the coefficient of x in my answer is a 0.5 and the question is a h. So comparing coefficient of x, h is given to be 0.5 and comparing the constant, k is given to be 17.5. And that's the answer for this question in part A. Now, moving on to part B of this question, we are to find the range of values of m for which a curve equation, a quadratic curve in this case, does not intersect. The keyword does not intersect. So does not intersect implies that it has no solution. When it has no solution, it means no real roots. All right, no real roots at all. Um, and this is a straight line of y plus x equals to 1. So let us do a, a, a simple sketch like this over here. So over here, once again, our quadratic curve has a coefficient x squared that is greater than 0. It's a 1 x squared. So it's a happy face curve and when it says it does not intersect so there is no intersection between these two parts here and this straight line is just simply a downward sloping because x the gradient is a negative one so negative x yes a gradient of negative one is a downward sloping it says it does not intersect that means to say there is no intersection there is no solution therefore we can we can come to this conclusions that over here does not intersect implies that there is no solution meaning to say there is no real roots. Later on, we will need to use this information whereby we set discriminant of b squared minus 4ac to be lesser than 0. So with this information now, we can start to do our part b questions. So for part b, we will have this. So what we do first is to sub the straight line equations and uh, making y the subject to give us a y to be equal to 1 minus x so that we can sub into the quadratic equations. So we sub the linear equation into the nonlinear equation. This is always recommended to sub linear into the nonlinear when we are doing a simultaneous between um, equations. So once we sub inside, we will have the next step like this. Over here, 1 minus x is equal to this whole part. And reshuffling this whole thing, as we can see here, x squared. And this is the n plus 2 um, close bracket x. There's a coefficient of x. Over here, there's a minus x. If I shift this minus x to the right, I have a n plus 2 uh, plus 1 close bracket x will give us a n plus 3 close bracket x. And the 1 on the left and on the right can be cancelled out, leaving us a constant of negative m. And we set it to be equal to 0. So before we do any form of discriminant, we need to set the equation to be equal to 0. So by discriminant over here, because it says no real roots, discriminant is less than 0, we do our b squared minus 4ac in the next step. So discriminant to be less than 0. Our b, which is the coefficient of x, is a n plus 3, bracket squared, b squared. Minus 4a refers to the coefficient of x squared, in this case a 1. And c refers to the constant of negative m. And we set it to be less than 0 because there is no real roots. So over here, doing a simple expansion and refactorization, we have an m plus 9 bracket, m plus 1 to be lesser than 0. So as you can see here, we can use back the same information. The part of the curve that is lesser than 0 is actually one range. Lesser than 0 is still one range. So by writing as one range, it means to say in between the smaller number on the left and the greater number on the right. And by that, I'm referring to this solution, the smaller number on the left, the greater number on the right. So m is in between the range of negative 9 to negative 1. And that is the answer for this part B of this question. Thank you for watching. I hope you like this video and see you in the next one.